Hello. Well, today I wanted to talk about a film uh, that, I mean, I have already talked about this before, <clears throat> but for the first three films, I sort of talked about <laughs> these films around the, for like the anniversary of, uh, of the year that they came out, and uh, I thought I should probably continue with that. Um, this film is 40 years old. Uh, as of today, you watch it, <clears throat> or at least as this video was uploaded, uh, Friday, April 13th, um, or that was the day it came out on, uh, but today is you know, Saturday. Um, and of course the film is Friday the 13th, the final chapter. And I also have this shirt. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, about four years ago or so, when the Friday the 13th box set came out from Scream Factory, you know, I talked about for having seen uh, the Friday the 13th film, the original, on the big screen, as well as getting all these films. And then the following year, uh, 2021, I did a whole, you know, uh, discussion of all these films. And, and because 1981 was when the second film came out, you know, in 2021 was the 40th anniversary of the second film. And then the year after, I talked about the 40th anniversary for the third film. And I figured I should probably do this one also. This probably will be the last time I will do some kind of anniversary, like 40 years and such. Uh, just because... Uh, well, this is my favorite of the films, as I've mentioned before. Um... And I'll probably have a link at some point somewhere. Uh, if you haven't seen this, me talk about this film before, again, I'll leave a link up to, so you can definitely view it if you want. Um, so in that sense, I don't really have a whole lot to say that's new, but I will say I always love watching this film. You know, usually on Friday the 13th, any Friday the 13th, I'll watch at least the first four films. Um, because they're all within 90 minutes or so. So, you know, at nighttime, usually you could just like back to back to back marathon. And um, a marathon of those films. And uh, yeah, usually... Uh, might be like six hours or so, but it's a pretty nice way to spend like a, an evening, night, whatever. And uh, I've been doing that for many years. Uh, of course, when I have, when I just had the DVDs of these films, I would do that. But of course, now with the Blu-ray, that's a, a bit different uh, as the Clarity is a lot better, like, you know, the picture quality and everything, and, um, here, you know, there's a 4K, new 4K scan of uh, original negative for this, so, looks excellent, um, of course, this film, you know, was the final film of the franchise until this made a whole lot of money, and then, of course, they had to do a sequel, and, uh, and honestly, after this film, they had a total of uh, eight more movies. So they've up to number 12, which is the reboot. And I might talk about that film, honestly, again, because honestly, that's not a bad film. It's, a, it's essentially taking elements of the first four films and putting it in a, like a modern setting. Well, modern for like 2008, 2009. That's nine is what it came out, but yeah, this is an excellent conclusion. And if they did end it here, I mean, it would have been a fantastic uh, franchise. Of course, they kept going, and um, and there are some uh, good films afterwards. Part six is a fan favorite, also, 
as is this film, obviously. A lot of people say, you know, either this is their favorite or six is, or the first film. Um, obviously others, people, depending on who it is, they'll say which other film is their favorite. But I always go back to this. This film is just phenomenal. I think it has some of the best acting, some of the best writing. You know, the characters really feel like actual characters. Not that they didn't in the previous films, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> or even in some of the later films. But this just seems like they're really uh, the pinnacle, essentially, because, you know, this is supposed to be the last film ever. There was not supposed to be any more after this. But this film made a lot of money. And uh, regardless of what the reviewers say, basically their opinion means nothing <laughs> to fans of this franchise. <laughs> but this film was excellent. And still is excellent. Um, this is the first installment of the, what many people say, the Tommy Jarvis trilogy. It was played by uh, Corey Feldman, one of his early films before he really became well known, as is another person in this film, uh, Crispin Glover. This was a year before everybody would know who Crispin Glover was in Back to the Future. This also has Kimberly Beck and Peter Barton. Um, Ted White played uh, Jason Voorhees in this film, even though he doesn't get credit. But that's because he also he wasn't totally fond of certain things that the director was doing. Like he, he just was, he just wasn't happy. Um, you know. It, yeah, if you watch behind the scenes or hear him talk, you know, there are certain elements or stuff that went on, um, particularly with the, you know, woman who was out there on the lake and it was incredibly cold, but, you know, it's supposed to be summertime, so everybody has to pretend it's completely warm. Anyway, she was in like a bikini, but she was out there in the cold and they had to keep resetting everything and taking quite a while to do obviously you know with lighting and stuff like on one hand there's that but you know she was just out there in the lake and this like bikini that has to also be kind of like undone because she's supposed to be she has to you know she's skinny dipped and swam all the way out there until of course Jason kills her but you know she was starting to turn blue and uh the actor you know, dead white. He was angry and furious, and he said, you, "Either you take her out of there, or I'm gonna leave this movie." And there was so much of this film was already done, and they couldn't afford to have Ted White leave, so they did what he requested, and she was able to get out of the water and out of the cold to warm up. But then she got pneumonia. But she actually thanked him because you know he helped and <laughs> helped her out quite a bit in that situation. But stuff like that, you know, like just things that just kind of added up where he just wanted nothing to do with this film after he was like, I'm getting paid. I'm the stunt man also, you know, I'm because that was his career. You know, he was a stunt man. He dealt for John Wayne and so many other things. But, uh, you know, never got to meet Ted White at any convention. Of course, I've never been to many conventions in my life, but. If I did, uh, it would probably only be in Iowa. And I don't believe he ever came to Iowa. But, you know, that happens. Iowa is not the kind of place a lot of uh, people who do stuff like this actually go to. Uh, at least fairly regularly. So, yeah, I love this movie. This is not only my favorite and what I would consider the best Friday the 13th film of all time, but it's also my third favorite horror film of all time, right behind The Silence of the Lambs and Jaws. This is just a quality film. I love it. I love basically every single thing about this movie. I can't say anything more than I've already said. It's a phenomenal movie. Of course, there are people who don't like slasher films in any way or horror movies anyway of course what people think of horror anymore they just think of slasher films 
because, well, in a lot of ways, these are incredibly easy to make. A lot of people, that's partly why you see people make horror movies before anything else. Like, you know, uh, obviously here, Crispin Glover. You know, this wasn't his first movie at all, but this was kind of the ones that's really started to, because people like horrors, and this is a big popular franchise at the time, and still is, but, you know, this was one of the first things that people saw him in. And then, of course, the next year, Back to the Future, everybody knew who Chris McGlover was. You know, not everyone knew because not everybody would see this film. Because, you know, again, uh, not everybody loves horror movies or enjoys them in any way. Uh but, you know, also, I, same you could say with uh, Corey Feldman. Um, uh, yeah, here on the back says, The body count continues to mount in this vivid thriller, thriller in fourth and final, question mark, story in the widely success, successful Friday the 13th series. Jason, Jason, Crystal Lake's least popular citizen, returns to wreak further havoc uh, in Friday the 13th, the final chapter. After his revival in a hospital morgue, the, os <clears throat> the hockey mask murderer fix fixes his vengeful attention on the Jarvis family and a group of uh, Roto, uh, carefree teenagers. On Tommy jo Jarvis is the fishing out of horror films with special talent for masks and makeup. As he had di as, as a diabolical Jason finally met his match, and well, considering the title, it would seem so. And also, he gets a knife through the eye here, and blood coming out of his behind his mask. And of course, I, I again I will show you the alternate uh, uh, cover that you can take out, but I prefer this. But I do like how. They kind of have different kind of fonts for the alternate covers for this. One thing that kind of sucks with that series is that, you know, not all of the uh, Friday the 13th films have alternate covers in any way. So, uh, like, like, 7 and 8 had only one poster. And so you can't really flip it over. So I'm going to say they just have Jason in looking real uh, imposing it and threatening. Though uh, part nine and, uh, and number 10 also didn't have alternate posters, but they had different things on the back. So I don't know why they couldn't do something similar. Just have like something else there. And also this moment here, that's kind of interesting. Um, with uh, Corey Feldman being pulled in, or pulled out the window, kind of, by Jason. And uh, Corey Feldman was legitimately scared at that moment. Like, he didn't know exactly when that was going to happen. They were kind of, like, counting, and they, and Ted, Ted White knew when to go. Corey Feldman didn't, and so he, all he knew is he was supposed to back up towards the window. And he was probably supposed to, like, count or something to be prepare himself. Well, <laughs> Ted White was given the cue to uh, lunge forward and grab him. So when you, if you see this film and that scene comes up and you see him get grabbed, he is legitimately scared. Um, and uh, Ted White, uh, and for his perspective, thought that he was kind of a little brat <laughs> and stuff. Um, but did say that uh, Corey Feldman did an excellent job um, in the film, even though he wasn't a fan of Corey Feldman at all, <laughs> because he, he, like you know, he's trying to stay away from everybody. So that way, when he comes in to do a scene with him, they're all legitimately scared. Whereas uh, Corey Feldman would try to hang around everybody and kind of, uh, I guess, annoy Ted White. At least that's from his perspective, at least. Um, but yeah, I really love this film. 
40 years and it's still amazing. And uh, also, uh, 40 years ago was the birth of a, another franchise that will someday, at some time, uh, come in correlation with Friday the 13th. Being a Nightmare on Elm Street. And I might actually talk about those films this year. <clears throat> at least the first one especially. But yeah, that's a franchise I haven't spoken about at all. But yeah, Friday the 13th, the final chapter, still is my favorite of the fil of the franchise. And um, yeah, I'll probably uh, at least talk about uh, the reboot sometime this summer. Um, no, sh not sure exactly when, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm planning on doing that at least. But yeah, anyway, that's the <clears throat> my just uh, I guess summarization of my fondness again. You know, four years ago, or I guess three. Yeah, three years ago, I actually did all of the the Friday the Thirteenth films. So if you haven't, you didn't see those, you could go look. And again, I will have a link to this one my full uh, discussion on this film. So that way, if you want to see it, you can. If not, that's fine. Maybe you thought, oh, I, you already heard me speak about this right here and now, so what's the point of going to some other video? And yeah. Anyway, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you're all having a great Saturday. Yeah, this video came out on a Saturday, not Friday, but it's a leap year. If it wasn't a leap year, this video would be on Friday the 13th, so. <clears throat> I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you are, you all are all having a great day. Hope your weekend is going well. Hope you've had a great week. And I hope you'll have a great week uh, uh, in the coming week. So, hope all of you are doing well. And, uh, yeah. Please take care and uh, make sure uh, you just enjoy yourself. And um, it is getting warmer, and that's why I got a haircut. I didn't say anything earlier, but, you know, I thought kind of obvious, but who knows. Maybe some people thought I <clears throat> might have uh, done something. Like, I eh, got this, well, cut and shaved or whatever, but then... Did something with the back, but nope. I'm getting prepared for <clears throat> more warm spring days. So yeah, hope you're all doing well. Please take care. Have a great day. <clears throat>